Hello everyone, it's been um, a minute. I am back um, and I'm really excited because today we're gonna be talking to Sarah of Hugs for Drugs who actually created the A Bra That Fits calculator <laughs> that I recommend all the time, <laughs> like every video where I talk about bra fitting. So we're gonna talk a little bit about how the calculator was made, what it's useful for, and just kind of different aspects of our philosophies when it comes to bra fitting and education and all of that. So I hope you enjoy this interview. Hi, I'm Sarah. You may also know me as good old Frida. I am a lingerie vlogger and bra fitting enthusiast. Um, and I um, was uh, the person who created the Abra That Fits calculator that we're here to talk about today. I also run a blog called Hugs For Your Drugs, um, which is sort of about a more technical side of bra fitting and um, bra making. I'm very excited to talk about the calculator and kind of the back end of that. But first, do we want to talk a little bit about the history of a bra that fits? Yeah, absolutely. Um, a bra that fits was, is primarily a subreddit, but there's also a um, Facebook group and some other social media accounts um, about bra fitting. Um, it was first created in about 2010. It grew from there really with information um, about bra fitting sort of gleaned from Polish online bra fitting forums that um, there were some users that kind of brought the information from there over to an English speaking subreddit. From there the community really grew and um, built its own resources. It created its own um, measurement system partially based on that information, partially based on stuff that the community itself um, devised. When I joined there wasn't a calculator at all. Um, it was all measure yourself, figure it out on your own. Um, and we even, I remember once um, someone actually said, oh it's impossible to create a calculator because um, it's just too nuanced and like um, yeah it, it, it really wasn't that nuanced and, and someone called Iris Flame actually made a calculator um, in about 2013 or 2014 um, that was using the measurement system we devised at the time. Was there anything in particular that made you go like, all right, this one is off in this way? Were there like certain fit issues or things that you kept seeing come up? By about 2016, I was sort of moderating the community and um, the mods and I had sort of come to realize that the measurement system then was not quite up to standard. It was a bit, um, it recommended bras a little bit too small in the band, a little bit too large in the cups. If you're plus size, then your snug measurement is gonna be snugger um, and it's going to dig into your body fat and it's going to artificially inflate the difference between your bust measurement and your under bust measurement. And so we were seeing that quite a lot. And actually there was one user who devised a system that essentially just took two cup sizes off for anyone above a 36 band. And that actually worked quite a lot better. I don't really like having two separate systems. I want to envelop it all into one. So I devised a slightly new algorithm for it um, with the help of the other mods at the time and created that um, and released that and that's been serving us quite well um, since then. So we take um, three different measurements of your underbust. Your underbust is the um, spot directly beneath where your breasts attach to your chest. So if your boobs um, hang, you know, hang below, you need to tuck the measuring tape right underneath. So you measure that um, loosely, so that's just around your flesh, not indenting it at all measure it snugly, which is um, a good measurement because it's quite subjective. It is what feels comfortable on you, um, but sort of secure and firm. And then you measure it as tightly as possible. You really stretch your tape. Um, then there are three bust measurements. All of these are taken braless. Um, there's a lot of calculators that say to take measurements with like an unpadded bra on, but what you're doing then, if your bra doesn't fit you well, you're just measuring the bra, basically. So you measure your bust while standing up horizontally around the fullest part of your bust, even if it's below where your underbust is. Then you lean forwards at 90 degrees and you measure around here, around your bust, and then you lie down on your back and you take that measurement um, around your bust there. Yeah, and then the calculator works its magic. It's, it's quite simple at its roots, basically. The calculator determines band size and cup size kind of separately, and then it sort of combines them together in the end. So band size is determined primarily by your snug underbust measurement, and it generally finds a band size that's close to your snug underbust measurement. If it realizes that your tight underbust measurement is very close to your snug underbust measurement, that says to the calculator that you are maybe um, a more muscular person or a bonier person. You probably want to size up in the band, um, so it may suggest sizing up in the band in that case. The loose measurement isn't actually um, encountered within the band size, it's all on snug and tight. Then the cup size is um, determined by first looking at your bust measurements. If your 
leaning bust is quite close to your standing bust. That says to the calculator that your breast tissue may be a bit firmer, maybe a bit more self-supporting, and it just considers the leaning bust measurement to be an accurate portrayal of how your breast tissue behaves when supported. If your breast tissue is a bit softer, you're a bit less self-supporting, there will probably be a larger difference between your standing bust and your leaning bust measurement. And if that's the case, then the calculator takes an average of all three bust measurements. If you are um, assigned male at birth, then the calculator takes a weighted average of your bust measurements. So it actually averages all of your measurements, but counts the standing bust and the lying bust twice, which means that it, it brings the bust measurement down a little bit more. This is because if you're AMAB, you tend to have um, a slightly more V-shaped rib cage and slightly more conical breast tissue, we've noticed, which can make the calculator think that you've got more breast tissue than you have. So just bringing that measurement down a bit, we found um, is quite a lot more accurate. So once it's determined the best bust measurement, the best bust measurement for you. It then finds the difference between your bust measurement and your loose underbust. That is your initial cup size. And then it sister sizes that to your band size. Cup letters are not the same for every band size. So a 34D has the same cup volume as a 32 double D. So if you are calculating as your breast volume is say a 34D, but your band size are indicating that a 32 band might be better, then it will sister size you down to a 32E. And that's basically how it works. I will link either in the cards or down below to the A Bra That Fits wiki page that like goes through all of the numbers in detail. Uh, but thank you for walking <laughs> through all of that. It's so cool to hear about how everything like interacts and how it interacts differently for different bodies. The data that was used, it was a survey that just went out to the Reddit, is that right? Um, yeah, it initially just went out to the A Rather Fit subreddit. I also was requesting data specifically from um, people who were um, assigned male at birth um, because the information that we had for giving them specific bra fitting advice didn't, was a little bit um, lacking. Um, and so I actually sent um, out the survey to um, some of the larger like um, transgender subreddits, um, like Ask Transgender, um, and that... Uh, I got a lot of data from the um, AMAB crowd there, which was really helpful in um, refining the measuring information that we give to AMAB people. It is very useful because I feel like these are not only holes in like most calculators, but also in most training. Because I know you were also trained as a bra fitter, and I feel like training does start to fall off, both with plus size bodies and with trans bodies. I don't know, it's just, it's very cool and interesting that you were able to like actually bring these all together into one spot instead of having them be these like separate areas of study. Yeah, like when I was, um, cause I, I used to work at Revisimo, the training there on any um, transgender people or even just like um, cisgender men, the information was just basically like, yeah, they exist, um, fit them, I guess. Obviously every trans person, every cis person, everyone is different, um, but there are, overall demographical differences between certain measurements that is good to keep in mind um, when you're fitting someone who is um, NAMAB and that's important to talk about because it just helps people find brows that fit them a lot faster than if you just don't know anything at all. All of the common information that we have about it is derived pretty much from like cis women below like a 34, 36. Even just kind of going off of like oh well you can just fit people the same you're still kind of like putting this other system and this other set of like standard measurements and everything onto people who are not part of that group. I have talked about my um, my disdain for a lot of the, the fit quizzes that brands have on their websites. And I've also talked to a couple of brands that are trying to do more accurate fit quizzes. Um, but I'd love to get your input on you know, why having a calculator is different, why the results are going to be different than having a fit quiz like a lot of brands propose as their alternative. Yeah, I mean, I completely share your disdain for fit quizzes. I really do. The issue with fit quizzes is sort of twofold, in my opinion. Um, the first is that it's a very subjective thing. If you look at your bra and you think your bra fits right, and you don't have any frame of reference for what a proper bra feels like, then you're not going to, you're going to answer the question saying, yeah, my bra feels right. Yeah, it, it feels good. Like, even if it doesn't feel good, you don't know how good it should feel. I've never taken a fit quiz that's given me more than like one cup size different and like one band size different. Because I, I take them a lot, I test them out. You don't get any useful information. So if I'm wearing a bra that's like three band sizes off and four cup sizes off, 
I'm actually going to get the same results as someone who's maybe one band and one cup size off. So you really just need to take some measurements and just go from a new starting point entirely. And that's sort of um, why I think a calculator is so good, because, you know, the, the numbers on the measuring tape do relate to something objective about your body. This measurement is this size on you. You might have your own personal fit preferences when it comes to bras, and you may find that um, the calculator size is not correct. It's not correct in a lot of cases, you know, it's just a starting point, but it does come from an actual specific mathematically calculated um, base rather than just a subjective one. Like, I love the idea of a fit quiz because as a bra fitter, you are asking these same the same questions that a fit quiz asks where you're like, okay, so what problems do you have? Like, what's not comfortable and all that. And it feels like a, a fit quiz, even the best fit quiz is still perpetuating the same issues that the most terrified bra fitter who doesn't want to like change anything too much for a customer would have. It's such a common problem that someone will come in wearing a band size like three sizes too big and a lot of fitters, and it's very understandable, don't want to be like, oh well you're these three sizes smaller so they'll kind of like split the difference a little bit and not give the person the chance to really try it. And fit quizzes I feel like always do the same thing. You can say so many times like my band is riding up, like it's pulling right here, this isn't laying flat, like things that perfectly correspond to needing to go down multiple sizes in the band and it'll just be like, no, your band's probably fine. You have no chance of that with the calculator, first of all, but also the calculator isn't beholden to any specific bra. So if you're in a shop and you're selling bras, you might think to yourself, well, this person's come in the shop, they want to have a good experience. I should maybe try and fit them in something that we have, which like can absolutely be the right choice in some cases, but in some cases it's not really. What areas have you found a lot of success in with this new calculator? It's a better starting point for people in general. The uh, Bra That Fits community has grown quite a lot since the calculator has been introduced. Obviously that can't all be placed on the calculator, um, but I think that people are getting a better starting point and so they're sticking around more, then they stick around to learn more, then they learn to give advice, and then the community just kind of builds on itself there. The previous calculator didn't have um, an option for AMAB people, so having that in um, has helped open up bra fitting to um, more people. On my end, as kind of an educator outside of the abroad that fits um, ecosystem, part of the reason it is so useful is because it encapsulates so many different kinds of bodies and kinds of people who want to get their bra size. And I can't actually think of other resources that I recommend people to that are that inclusive. That is a huge part of why, at least why I feel like I can send people to a bra that fits for their first starting point as much as I do. And I'm sure that a lot of other people kind of feel the same way. Have there been any drawbacks to this new calculator or is there anything you kind of want to tweak moving forward? Uh, a few things that um, I'm not entirely happy with. Um, the first is that six measurements is a lot of measurements. And a lot of the time people can't really be bothered to take them all. Um, and I'd love to um, think about potentially introducing a more simple system that maybe leads people into taking the six measurement um, calculation because it is so much more accurate having those measurements that I wouldn't want to get rid of them entirely but just maybe persuading people that taking those measurements is a good idea. It's still not perfect for plus size people and for people with more v-shaped rib cages because if your rib cage is like this um, the bust measurement that you take is going to become larger because your rib cage is larger. That's not your boob, right? So if you try on a bra in that size, then it might be too large in the cups. Um, this is especially often the case for plus size people. So um, I'd like to potentially um, collect some more data and um, try and find um, a system that works just as well, perhaps only measuring the breasts. Um, but I want to see how easy people find to do that because I think there might be a bit of difficulty confusion around where people's breast tissue ends. I have so many people talk to me who are like, well, bra sizing is broken and like try and explain to me how, what would make it better. And I'm like, you just can't, you can't really make it better without making it more complicated. As much as I often think like, oh, well, it would be so useful if we could just have people measure their breast tissue. I don't know anyone who isn't who either hasn't spent a long time kind of studying this stuff or is a bra fitter and has seen a lot of different breasts and how they kind of connect who could reliably measure 
that spot. I definitely feel the pain of like wanting to make it more understandable while also wanting to make it more effective and those two things kind of like battling it out. Another improvement that I want to add is um, the um, calculator currently gives um, sizing advice for um, UK bra sizes, sort of st a standard US bra size. A lot of brands, especially in the US, um, sort of order their cups differently. So some of them might go double D, triple D, F. Some of them might go double D, triple D, G. Some of them might not do triple D. I was thinking about potentially adding um, sort of brand specific guidelines. Um, I haven't yet because firstly there's a lot of brands about, but also I kind of worry that that will come across as endorsing them specifically. But I really want the calculator to just be like a guide that you can then take to any brand and there's a reasonable chance that it might work. It won't work with every brand, of course, but I think it works for a majority of them. Other than like clothing brands who make bras, aren't really making bras, they're just kind of adding something else into their into their cycle, which Bra sounds- garment <laughs> item. <laughs> it sounds very snotty, but like, I think that just some, some brands are like, people want something to wear under their shirts. And so we can do that. Other than those size charts, which I think tend to be the most all over the place. I personally haven't really encountered any brands, any of the like major established bra brands wouldn't work if you took your calculator size to them. But I also, I know that I've seen people talk about it. I've seen people talk about brands where they're like, you just have to go with this other size. Um, I've just personally never experienced it. I think it's found in some like vintage repro. Um, they, they tend to um, actually tend more towards snugger bands. So adding inches to under bust can be useful there. And then, yeah, just a few um, sort of smaller brands that are just kind of more engineered as like a fashion garment than a um, support garment, basically. So then the last thing I wanted to talk about was the difference between personal preferences and fit and education and how those things can run up against each other when it comes to, you know, bra education, fit education. Um, and also developing any tool like this that's supposed to help people get into that first bra. That's, that's a very interesting topic, actually. Um, especially with the history of bra fitting spaces on the internet, there has been a bit of pushback to a bra that fits and rated communities, especially um, with uh, a popular kind of phrase that went around the internet this wasn't specific to a bra that fits, it's more in the general lingerie blogging sphere. It was sort of called the war on plus four. Various people accused bra fitting um, groups as being overly militant, forcing people into two small bands and two large cups, trying to convince people that they're slimmer and bustier than, than they actually were and setting them up to, to fail, basically. I, I really reject many of those accusations. However, because everyone was so has such a strong desire to see people get fitted the way they were fitted and experience the transformation that they experienced. It was a, a bit of an over-policing issue on um, Brow Fit and people were kind of insisting that what, what worked for them worked for everyone, right? And so I think that the online Brow Fit community has most of all, uh, has mostly calmed down. There is always, whenever I um, giving people advice, there's always a voice in the back of my head being like, don't, don't push them. I believe that the Abra that fits calculator is the best um, calculator that exists, but it does just give a starting size, right? And there would be, there would be people who would comment on lingerie blogs and stuff like that, kind of being like, you're not wearing the right bra size. And I really understand the intention behind it because when you first find a bra that fits you, you are like, this is amazing. I have to tell everyone about this. I have to tell my 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 neighbor, my mom, my sister, my pet fish. It is also important to understand that everyone's personal needs are different and you don't know what someone's needs are unless you are that person. But at the same time, you don't know what your own needs are until you've tried on the thing that suits your needs best, right? So I think the importance of creating education is to emphasize that Anything you suggest is just a starting point and your own personal desires trump anything that anyone has taught you. People are suggesting things to you for a reason and you should maybe trust them for a bit um, and figure out how that relates to your own um, personal um, fitting needs. People come into this kind of education space and it is complicated because bra fit is the kind of thing that 
we should be learning from the time we're really young and we're not. And coming into something like this, where it's something that you've been, you've thought that you've known about for, you know, sometimes like 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. And then suddenly you're being told you actually don't have that information. And now all of it's coming at once. I definitely get can feel really overwhelming. I definitely do also <laughs> struggle with the, uh, you want to help people kind of find what will work best for them. And so I always, I always say like, if you genuinely have no complaints about your bra, you're probably fine. But here are things that you might not think of as like complaints about your bra, like if your shoulders always hurt, or like if you um, feel like you're moving your bra around all day, or if you feel like bras never fit right, and you just think it's about like bras in general, mm -hmm. then that's a good sign that it's like, all right, here, now it's time for you to maybe take a look at what other people are saying about these issues that might be contributing to that versus it just being like this overwhelming thing that everyone who wears bras has to deal with. Mm. I think that's a really good way of going about it. But I do think that um, when you are uh, when you are younger, there is actually a tendency to actually mentally gloss over these issues anyway. Um, when I was a kid, I was wearing, um, I was about 14 when I found um, a bra that fits and then proper bra fitting from there. I was wearing a 32D at the time and needed about a 26 double F. So you can imagine how that fitted on me, you know, no support, band riding up, you know, the only issue that I could, that I sort of was able to mentally understand was that my shoulder straps fell off, but I thought that was just kind of, oh, I wasn't tightening them enough that day, you know. Anyone who is curious should try it anyway. Try measuring themselves, try finding a different brow size, even if you don't have any of these complaints at all. But if you do have any of these complaints, then definitely try it. <laughs> yeah, I definitely think that if you're curious about it, you might as well try it is a good way to, to think about it as well. If you're watching this video, if you're looking at information on this stuff, it's probably a good sign that you want to try it from kind of scratch and like try the calculator, try and really find out what the baseline most people are talking from is. Mm, yeah, exactly. But at the same time, if you are getting fit advice that says there is some fit advice that I've seen that says the band should not stretch out more than an inch or so when you pull out at the tightest. Now, I personally believe that that's not a very good fitting philosophy and it leads to bands that are too snug. But I've seen quite a few people attempt to fit their bras like this and kind of come away with the idea, well, it's better than what I was wearing before, but I'm uncomfortable, but people tell me that it's right, right? So always listen to your own body. If Even if someone tells you that's good, but you're sitting here going, I don't know, I don't, I don't feel great about this, then you should, you know, um, change what you're doing somehow, um, in some way. Yeah, it's trial and error, and it's a bummer that we all have to do this trial and error once we've already kind of figured out how we want the rest of our clothes to fit. Most people who I talk to who are coming into this have been wearing bras for a while, and so it's like, well, I figured out how I want my pants and my shoes and all these things to fit, so it's like a bummer that you have to go through all these things again that we went through in, you know, after puberty when we had to figure out how to dress our bodies. I mean, obviously, like, I think it's worth it for most people. I'm glad that all of these kind of educational resources are out there now. There was definitely a long time where they didn't exist or like you could only find information in individual people. So I'm glad that people can now kind of, you know, find that educational space. And even if it is kind of an imperfect one where they're getting advice that maybe they don't carry forever, having a lot of access points where they can try something and say, all right, well, this is better, which means that it can get even better from here is very useful. Exactly. I think another advantage of online spaces is that it does give you a longer time frame to sort of analyze things. If you're just going to a shop and you go to the bra fitter in the shop and they fit you for like 20 minutes, maybe, you know, um, you kind of come out of that like, oh, that was a bit of a whirlwind, but I bought something. So like, I guess this is fine. But when you are taking it with your own at your own pace, measuring yourself, trying on a few brows, taking them back, you can really understand yourself a lot better than just kind of having someone do it for you. Which has its own benefits, obviously, because that person's probably a lot more experienced than you. But it also has its drawbacks as well. Thank you so much for <laughs> chatting with me about all this. I'm really excited. Yeah, th thank you for having me. Um, it's been great talking to you. I love talking to um, knowledgeable people who come from a different background, so we have, you know, um, different perspectives and ideas to discuss. So it's been, I've had a great time. Where can people find you if they want to keep up to date with you after this? I have um, a blog. It's called Hugs for Your Jugs. 
www.blogspot.com. That is where you can find any of my thoughts on bra fitting and bra making. I also um, have an Instagram at Hugs for Your Jugs um, and a TikTok um, at Good old Frida. So thanks again so much to Sarah for being willing to talk to me about this. Um, I love being able to dive into kind of the more technical aspects of a lot of this stuff and it's really nice hearing from someone who, you know, built the foundation of a lot of this stuff. If you want to find Sarah, all of the links will be in the bio. Other than that, let me know, as always, if there's anything you want me to talk about, any questions that you have, and I will talk to you guys next week. I'm going to try and get back on a weekly or bi-weekly upload schedule. Um, so I will talk to you guys soon. Bye. Bye, bye, bye.